Today we are discovering what secrets Survivor Borneo did not tell us in the edited television show. Some of these will be game related, some are strategic, and some are just plain silly. Basically, as long as it isn't part of the show that aired on TV, it is fair game to be considered a secret. And while most of the secrets here are focused on Survivor Borneo, some of them do apply to Survivor as a whole. Heads up, this list contains the secrets that I personally found to be the most interesting. Not every single secret in existence about the season is in this video. In fact, I have previously made a video all about the origins of Survivor that, of course, has some secrets about Borneo in it. So check out that video for more secrets about how the show began. Link in the description. With that, let's count all 47 of them in absolutely no particular order. 39 days, 16 people, one survivor. Number one, are you ready to jump into a time machine? Well, buckle up because I have some ads for Survivor Borneo that were clearly made before the show aired. Like they got this footage right after they were done and they just put it in the ads. They didn't color correct it, nothing. It's rough, but this is how they advertised the show before it began. Premiering CBS Wednesday. Let's do it! We're stranding 16 real people on a remote island. They've been given two minutes to salvage whatever they can off this boat. Without food, electricity, or comforts of any kind, they'll compete for $1 million and once a week vote to see who stays and who goes. Survivor is the wildest show in history. The adventure of a lifetime. Premier CBS Wednesday. Number two, we all know how tie votes are broken nowadays and how the first ever Final Four tie was broken by the infamous Purple Rock in Marquesas. But the big question is, what would they have done had there been a Final Four tie in Borneo? Well, let me tell you about this specific situation. If she hadn't changed her vote, then it would have been a real tie. And in the original Survivor, Previous. the rules said that we had to do a physical challenge Mm. if we had a tie. So I still could have won. By the way, thanks for watching Once Upon an Island. Liking and subscribing really helps. And if you want to pick what videos I make and watch them all weeks and even months early, then consider supporting the channel on Patreon. If that interests you, then check out the link in the description. Thank you so, so much. Number three, Survivor Borneo was huge. And as an unexpected hit with another season not happening until February, they rushed to create a couple of retail released DVDs called Unforgettable Moments and Inside the Phenomenon that contain secret scenes and bonus interviews out the wazoo. It is chock full of goodies. And the first one I have for you here is a secret scene from before the game began where Rich is already suspicious of everyone. They could be lying to us, they could be protecting What's his name? Said he's a doctor. I've heard that before. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh -oh. You seem a little too trusting. You're going, oh, no, he would not tell us that. Yeah. <laughs> I can read it on your face. Number four, Greg is an infamous character from Borneo who I do have quite a few secrets about. The man, the myth, the legend who never took Survivor seriously got under Jeff Probst's skin right away. And in retrospect, Jeff says Greg taught him a lesson. I'm just not sure it's a lesson that Jeff wanted to learn. Greg Buis had a lot of fun at the expense of the crew. Greg bugged me, the first tribal council. My feeling was he was disrespectful and he was making fun of us. And I left the tribal council area and I thought, he ain't never gonna do that to me again. He kind of wanted to be on a TV show, but he really just wanted the adventure experience. And then I cooled down a little bit and I started thinking about it and I thought, why can't he do that again? What, why, I'm in charge? No, they can do whatever they want. That's what makes this interesting. Number five, are you ready for another flash from the past ad? Well, for this promo, they are really pushing sex, combat, and wackiness. Can this scream the year 2000 any more than it already does? Rumors are beginning to fly. There is no romance. It's all about sex. And the two tribes go to battle for food. Hey, wait, you can eat more dirt, because you're looking like hell. Time Magazine calls Survivor TV's biggest success. Yes. Who will be forced off the island next? It's time for you to go, bud. All new Survivor, CBS Wednesday. Number six. Another fun feature that comes on the Survivor Borneo DVDs are the commentary from the cast that you can listen to while watching the episodes. Like here, when Jervis explains why all of Pagong's stuff is in the ocean. As we're sitting on this boat, you know, before they made up the teams, BB popped the top on that Pagong box that Tagi's thrown over right now. Yep, Are, yep. See the top pop off? Oh. That's why it opened up and everything spilled. BB popped the top on it to take a peek. Now I'm jumping in the South China Sea trying to save 
all of our valuables that I, we didn't know we had until I see him floating to the bottom of the ocean. Number seven. Speaking of BB, there is a lot more we see of him in secret scenes, annoying his tribe, and just being a general nuisance. How did he get to do so much in only two episodes time? No wonder he wanted to quit. The night before we voted, or it was actually the day before we voted him off, he had said um, to Mark, I'm leaving. And Mark said, if you're leaving, you're going to quit in front of the camera. And he said, I don't quit. And they had this big drag out fight. And he said, you give me your phone now and I'm going to call because BB was, had money. And he said, I'm going to call. And I'm going to have a helicopter come in and pick me up right now. And Mark said, I'm not letting you leave here. If you don't quit on camera, you can't just disappear. And so then BB had said to me, he said, well, I have them vote me off. I want to be the next. And to be honest, he was probably the vote anyway. So mm -hmm. it was. But he he didn't uh, he wasn't quitting because it was too much for him. It was quitting because this wasn't his bag of tracks, you know, number eight. The next commentary bit comes from Jeff himself when he says he misses the raw, authentic look of seasons one through four in comparison to the seasons afterwards. Keep in mind that this is him around the time frame of season eight saying this. You know what else? I, I watched one of these episodes about a year ago, about two years after it aired. And now we're into the fifth season of Survivor or something like that. Seventh. Well, no, Eighth. at the time that I watched it. Oh, yeah. And I was thinking, wow, I like how crude the show looked compared to now. Uh huh. Now it looks like a motion picture. Uh -huh. It's huge. Uh -huh. And I think there was more authenticity because it felt more authentic. It looked more authentic. Well, in, in truth, I think it actually is a different game now. <laughs> Number nine, Jeff can be a ladies man. After all, he did win Julie Berry's heart in Vanuatu, and we heard them flirting with each other hard during the Vanuatu Secrets video. However, sometimes Jeff can be a guy with no filter, which is a rare thing for CBS to allow. But look at this. Why were you guys not doing anything? Damn, Ramona looks good. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about Ramona. Good, good <laughs> nice baby suit. Too bad she didn't last longer. <laughs> <laughs> Number 10. Are you ready for another old school Survivor ad? Do you own a TV? Well, if you don't, then prepare to feel like a loser. For these seven castaways to have lasted this long, they've had to be cunning. I'm a smart guy. And treacherous. If it's me, Rich, and Kelly at the end, me and Kelly are taking them down. But to survive Wednesday, they'll have to be ruthless. Making a deal with Rich is like making a deal with the devil. Who will ultimately survive on the number one show in America? The old redneck will burn the city slicker. <laughs> if you're not watching Survivor on Wednesday, you probably don't have a TV. You can't trust anybody. All New Survivor, CBS Wednesday. Number 11. In many, many interviews, it is revealed that Truly Production thought Richard Hatch was a goner in episode one. But why? Marty Dugard, who wrote, who wrote the first book on Survivor, chronicled it like a diary. And yeah. the very first thing he wrote was, Richard Hatch was destined to be the first person voted out. In fact, when they selected me, they told me, Mark Burnett and the rest of them, afterwards I was told that they selected me knowing I'd be the first one to go. Mm. I walked into one of the rooms and said something about, you know you're going to pick me, what you don't know is I'm going to win, and what you need to know for planning purposes is I'm going to host next year's show. And, uh, <laughs> and they were all like laughing because I was so stupidly cocky. In the first few days, I was convinced Richard would be the first person kicked off the island, but I underestimated his intellect and his ability to adapt and play the game. Number 12. The chest of money at Tribal Council from the season is a trademark I want brought back, if not only once, as a callback to the glory days. Maybe they can use it on a season with no twists as a, like a callback. That would be fun. Anyways, it probably won't happen because Jeff hated it. That's, that's funny. Oh yeah, and look at the money. Oh, uh, we hated the uh, money. Uh, I think CBS made us put it out there. Somebody. I thought that even myself, when I didn't have a super big voice, I just would say, this is cheesy. Yeah. A million dollars sitting here? What? It doesn't get rained on? No pirates come by and take it? The grip isn't going to pocket, you know. Oh, stacks of it? Yeah. Number 13. A couple secrets ago, I mentioned how production thought Richard was gone first, but in an obvious bit of irony, that is not what happened. So who do they want to win, and are they happy with Richard winning in retrospect? And what I remember about that is that we had Rudy Bosch, who was this 72-year-old Navy SEAL that everybody loved. And in the last challenge, it was three people, and all he had to do was hold on to this idol, and, he, and he'd win. And he's a Navy SEAL, and we all thought, oh my God, he's going to win. And he went to scratch his head, and he took his hand off the idol, and all of us collapsed in, inside thinking, oh my God, are, now it's going to be Richard or Kelly going to win? Who are they? 
Little did we know Richard Hatch would be, you know, the greatest thing that ever happened to Survivor. Number 14. Greg loves himself a coconut phone and was clearly the inspiration for Shane Powers and his rock Blackberry on Exile Island. What if I told you that Greg would use the coconut phone to interrupt production? When they're filming a tribal council, depending on how long it goes on, they change. They have to like stop and then change out tape. Literally, like in the middle of it, Greg would stop production, take a coconut phone call, and it was just so ludicrous. And, <laughs> and I, I enjoyed every minute of it. You know, they were very cognizant of the fact that it was a game show, and there were game show rules. And they kind of had to let it play out. Um, <laughs> and so, and so, I don't know if they let it play out now. <laughs> yeah, well, I think now they got they got they got all the laws down pat. I think they they've probably been through enough lawsuits. They know now what they can do and what they can't do. Number fifteen. But trust me, Greg screwed with the show even more. And I wonder how someone like him would be handled on the modern show, as there is no way Jeff nowadays will let Greg do all the shenanigans he got away with. Well, here are some more of those. Starting to rebuild one in the jungle, and they had set up a time lapse camera mm-hmm. to show the building of the you know this thing in stages, and and then they left for like lunch and stuff. And when they would leave. Greg would take his clothes off and stand for a shot, like a couple seconds. It was just long enough where they couldn't show. You know? <laughs> we found that they had hidden microphones and stuff in the in the shed we had made, like out there, the shelter we had made out on the beach. And um, they just took their machetes and <laughs> Greg hacked them all to pieces. Oh, he was a nightmare for production because you know when you have those. Um, when you have those battery packs on, yeah. you can't go into the water with them. You have to like have them take your, your battery pack off before you go into the water. And uh, and he would just go right and go and tell him he forgot. Like he ruined so much equipment. <laughs> Number 16, Jervis was kind of a known slacker in Borneo. We saw him persist with this in Blood vs. Water, even becoming an infamous coconut bandit. But would you believe it if I told you he slacked off even during challenges? What did this I do? coming from Jervis, a guy who on one challenge ran down the beach as fast as he could, got up in the jungle where nobody could see him, and walked. <laughs> and walked and walked. Comes by, gives me a wink when he gets back to the beach, runs really fast. <sighs> Sorry, guys, I did my best. And they're on him. He's on the ground. I need a massage, man. I'm really worn out. Man, that was my chariots of fire moment here. Number 17. Earlier, I mentioned how BB would do so so many things to annoy his tribe, and this next story from Jervis would have me gagging if I were there. How you were on a team with BB, I don't know. Oh my god, this guy's a character. Yeah, he was great though. Oh, but oh, I think I'd have strangled him though. We're yeah. getting water out the water hole, and BB's got cuts all on his hand, and he's di- dipping his hand in there. We're like, BB, no, please, we gotta drink this. He's sweating in the water. Number 18. Do you recall this season's sometimes garbage tribal councils? They certainly evolved episode by episode and got better, with one of them even having a conch shell so that the players would talk only one at a time instead of talking over each other like they did before. Here's what Jeff thought about this short-lived idea. We tried a lot of things. Mark's idea was um, brilliant in that he wanted a ritual that felt like it had been going on for thousands of years, and you were just seeing it for the first time. Uh. So we tried some things. Mark wanted me to try a conch shell, which I hated and didn't have enough clout to say no. So on like the first fourth fourth episode of the first season, they have to pass a conch shell. And I feel like, well, why am I even here then if they're going to pass this damn thing around? Number 19. What is one way to hype a Survivor finale? Pretend like showing even one second of it before it airs is forbidden by the powers that be. It began with 16 survivors. Let's do it! It became a national phenomenon and the number one show in America. This Wednesday, it all comes down to one final vote and one incredible night of TV. The Survivor finale is so amazing, so top secret, we can't show you a single second. Who will be the ultimate survivor? Find out on the two-hour finale. Then we're reuniting the castaways live. You can't miss the final night of Survivor. CBS Wednesday. Number 20. This next secret is funnier given the evolution and then de-evolution of the vote reveal on live TV. As we saw in Borneo, they did it on the island not knowing there was going to be any sort of live reunion. Well, Jeff wishes they would do this again. Little does he know. I wish we did this show. I wish I, we can't, but I wish we could still reveal the vote live oh. because there's never anything like that feeling 
of it being over. It's it's changed when you when you now don't do that. Yeah. It's very different. But there's no way right. to do it again. Number 21. Rumor mill says that BB wanted to quit but decided not to when Mark Burnett had him, shamed from even trying it. So instead, BB basically asked everyone to vote him off, though you wouldn't know that from the edited show, but you can see it clearly in the raw voting confessionals. He said that he was ready to go and he'd done what he came to do and he might not have been my first choice if he wasn't ready to go home. I know. I love BB to death, but I just think um, he's ready to go, and we've all made peace with that. Because I think he wants to go home. That he gets off, I think he wants to be off, but I think he he really wants to get off, and it's time. He wants to get off the island, so if that's what he wants. I give him his wish. He's out of here. Number 22, another fun feature that I would like to see brought back is a peek behind the curtains as to how they cast for the show because on the Borneo DVDs, they show this. They show them asking players questions, such as this one time Mark Burnett asked Stacy, How would you deal on the island with someone <clears throat> from another part of the country, say, who's totally a chauvinist? It really kind of feels women belong in the kitchen and... That would irritate me to no end. But I would like to think that I would be able to keep it in perspective and I would think that somebody like that would get the votes off for most of the women on the island so they wouldn't last very long. Um, I would try to hold my tongue, but I probably wouldn't be able to. Also, I need to mention that Stacy sued Survivor for manipulating her vote off and saving Rudy. That is a big secret that I believe deserves its own video. Number 23. Did you know that one time Richard Hatch was actually married to a woman? My mind was blown when I heard this. Talk about a blind side. And in this secret scene, he talks about why that is. The woman I married Where'd was from married? Australia. Just a, a friend. Green she paid card? me to marry her. Uh, oh, card. so oh, We were okay. married like 10 years or whatever. Wow. wow. I, I got a letter in the mail from her attorney in Australia asking for a divorce, and I wrote back a card saying, congratulations, honey, you must be getting married now. Oh. Like signed yourself a real man. That's yeah, yeah, right. Number 24. Believe it or not, season one had an unaired reward challenge. So why wasn't it shown? I mean, it is just a game where they get guess their current weight by looking in a mirror and seeing how this was cut for more camp life is still something they actually do nowadays. They'll cut reward challenges in favor of camp life. Number 25. Why did Jeff keep trying to out the alliance at tribal council, the secret alliance? This was in a time before Jeff tried not to give any new information away, but only interpret or suss out information from others. So here's why he says he kept asking about their secret alliance in Borneo. That was a complicated time because what happened was Rich and Sue where we were at a challenge and you guys weren't participating because you had extra members or for whatever reason, you guys started talking about who you were going to vote off. And I'm I'm sitting there, Jervis, going, oh, my God, I'm, I'm hearing what they're saying. And I remember <laughs> saying, guys, I don't want to hear it. And Hatch looked at me with all the confidence, you know, of a soon-to-be president and said, that's yeah, great. So anyway, who are we going to vote off, Sue? So now I'm thinking, okay, I guess he's telling me something. And I go back to Mark and I go, guess what I heard? Guess what I heard? <laughs> And he goes, well, fine, bring it up. And I bring it up. And the next day, Hatch is like, what are you doing? Oh You're my outing God. my alliance. Number 26, David Letterman hated, and I do mean hated, to have Survivor contestants on his show. He openly mocked them, never gave them any respect. And the only positive story I've ever heard from a Survivor who went on Letterman is the time that Sandra went on after Pearl Islands and congratulated Letterman on his newborn. And he said, ah, you're nice. That's it. Only when someone compliments him. Anyways, here's the Borneo cast on Letterman. Top 10 things I learned on Survivor Island. Number 10, Jenna. Leftover swimwear from the island can get you a grand on eBay. After being in tropical sun for a few days, chicks begin thinking you're Brad Pitt. Anytime you feel like a couple of nights back in civilization, just fake scurvy. Rubs is tasty. If the host asks you to participate in a reward challenge, make sure it's for the show. The best thing about a deserted island? No Letterman. Now I know where I'm gonna go if George W. Bush gets elected president. If you prepare rat meat by carefully cleaning, seasoning, and cooking it, it's pretty bad. Months later, I still get sand in places I wished I didn't. <laughs> Human body is a beautiful thing. Number 27, don't you wish we had the raw voting confessionals for every winner? I know I sure do, especially when it comes to seasons like Samoa. Well, in Borneo, they showed almost all of them during the finale, but they didn't show Greg's for suspense purposes. Well, in the bonus material on the DVDs, they released the footage of him voting for Rich. I mean, come on, man. Everybody guesses seven. It wasn't seven. It was nine. Nine was the number. But by lucky happenstance, you were close. 
Number 28, with that last secret in mind, people have long suspected that Greg never really picked Richard based on the number. So here's what Greg says in an interview many years after the fact. Uh, no, there was no sparing anybody's feelings. You know, picking a number is as good a way as, as doing anything um, when it comes down to it. I thought that the idea of that somehow we get retribution at the end of the show or that somehow you could hold people accountable for the, their actions was a little bit silly. And so I didn't think that there was really a lot of purpose to like, you know, who else would you have up there on stage or not, you know, some question that it was like, you know, tell me how great I am or tell me how sorry you are or some other crap. Number 29, we saw on the island a little romance happening with Greg and Colleen. Heck, the promos can't help but push like some sort of crazy sex romance was happening when maybe it was, but it wasn't as crazy as they wanted you to think. So did Greg and Colleen ever date afterwards? I know that I called Colleen one evening, uh, surprised that it appeared that we were making out on camera, which I don't remember particularly well. Uh, so there, there was some uh, some magic tree happen, happening there with the cameras. But um, overall, things went fairly well. Colleen and I gave it a go for a while after the show, and uh, and that didn't work out. But I think that she's still doing fairly well. Number 30. In many of these Secrets videos, I've talked about or even shown interviews talking about the Dream Team and what they do. Well, season one didn't have a Dream Team, and it was a mess. Season one. <laughs> season one, we get out there, and, and we don't know what's going on. We have a skeleton crew. So when we had a test or rehearse the challenge, Challenges, it was me and Jeff and Mark Burnett, our producers, our, our uh, kitchen help, you know, anybody, you know, we had little Malaysian kids, you know, it was just anybody we could get to do it. Anyway, we quickly learned we need people that do this because because yeah. all of a sudden I, I felt like I was uh, the door-to-door -door vacuum cleaner salesman. I'd, I'd knock on the door. Oh, hide. I don't know. No, I can't. I can't. I'm plus, doing it. Plus, if you're like, you know, covered in buckets of sweat and so yeah. tired from being so competitive and then you have to turn around and do your actual job, that yeah, I can imagine. Exactly, exactly. You want to go back to doing accounting or editing and you're just beat up. So then we got a dream team together. Number 31. Is Survivor fake? That question is asked far too often. It legally cannot be rigged or scripted, which is why Stacy sued for what happened to her. And ever since then, Survivor has kept their nose clean or at least hidden the dirty truth. Either way, there are regulations about this. Nothing on Survivor was staged. Uh, there are FCC rules that since quiz show problems of the 50s, that as a prize giving show, technically we fall under game show rules. Nothing was allowed to be staged. Every contest was one fair and square and there was no retakes or setups to have people say things we wanted them to say. Number 32, Survivor seems to go back and forth on whether to build a tribal council with a roof or go without. Heck, just skimming through the seasons, you can see the lighting at tribal council change drastically over time as well. Here are all the details on the original tribal council set. So here's the island council, uh, which was a manufactured set made to look like uh, a ruin in the middle of the jungle. We had the, uh, the set built in Los Angeles. Then we brought in a rigging crew and built this giant electronic truss to allow us to hang all the lighting um, to give it a controlled environment because shooting in the middle of the rainforest doesn't allow us to control light or weather. And it's the one element on Survivor where we need to be sure that everything's gonna go Hopefully as planned. Number 33, Jeff can be a cruel, cruel man. Why do I say this? Well, he loved that Jenna didn't get her tape when everyone else did. One of the most poignant moments for me was also one of the most delicious, was when Jenna's video didn't show up. Now, I'm not an idiot. I knew this was good television, and I relished the chance to be the one who gets to deliver it. But inside, I'm thinking, oh my God. God, how heartbreaking is this? Number 34, the loved one's visit this season was a weird, weird time. Sean wins, and then the next day his dad is driving a yacht. What a unique way to start off this long tradition, especially when the masseuse slaps his butt. Well, here's how that all came together. We held eight family members at Los Angeles airport with tickets in hand. The minute somebody won, which was Sean, Boom, phone call to LAX, put Sean's dad on the plane, the other six give him the care packages, they go home. Got on his plane and we told Sean, you know, we made a mistake. We can't give you the night on the yacht tonight. We have to delay one night. They buy it, makes sense to them. It's raining like crazy. We did that to give us the time for the plane to arrive in Malaysia and bring him to the boat. We take Sean downstairs, take one of our PAs. They become a masseuse, 
tell Sean to take a shower, you're gonna get a little massage. Oh, great. So this woman who's not a masseuse is down there going, you know, rubbing Sean. Number 35, do people on the island talk about their sexual history? Well, we hear this in season two, and in this secret scene from Borneo, we see it happening here as well, and Rudy is none too pleased. First night as one tribe, we sat around the campfire, told stories, very, very, very revealing stories. If we were all in the Navy, men and women, everybody here would be court-martialed. Me too, for listening. Yeah, I mean, and the military does not go for this kind of shit no more. Number 36. When everyone votes off Joel, he gets the heat for calling women cows. Guess what? It was Jervis who said it, as revealed on the show. But here is the unaired confessional. Girls are the stupidest thing when a planet next to cows. Number 37. Rudy was an amazing character on Survivor, this season and in All Stars. And nothing personifies this more than his voting confessionals. Uh, we formed an alliance. If you want to win the money, you got to get rid of the competition. Eliminating the big muscle. Eliminating the competition. Eliminating the competition. According to the master plan, he has to go. Our number was up. Number 38. Almost every survivor from the season goes on to become a pseudo celebrity for at least a year or two. They appear on TV shows, at football games, and even during Big Brother in season two of that show. Yeah, I got a video all about it too, link in the description. Anyways, did you know that even now, recently, Jervis starred in the film Stealing a Survivor, and Colleen Haskell was the love interest for Rob Schneider in The Animal. Yeah, these guys. They were celebrities. Number 39. We hear how Danny in Guatemala did not want to tell the show anything in fear that the producers would leak her secrets to other players, even if it was unintentional. Well, Jervis says in season one, he worried about this as well. You know, that whole mentality of sticking together, you know, making an alliance. I was doing that from day one. I just never spoke about it. Mm -hmm. You know, just as the game was going on, I for me, I was very fearful of the producers because I knew if I said something, they would leak it. And I didn't want that to mess up a plan that I had. Before the game started, Rich is doing the same thing. He had a plan of how he wanted to play the game, what he wanted to do. I had the same thing. Um, you know, Tagi gets the credit for making the first alliance and all that stuff. And they, they deserve it. They they put it out there. They spoke about it. Me, I never talked about it. Me and Joel never spoke about it. Number 40, the reunion for Survivor Borneo was thrown together so last second that hearing the stories from both sides, those being the players and the people who actually put it together, paint a picture that said, hey, we need to make more money off the success of the show. We need to do it now. They, they uh, picked the winner and uh, almost overnight they said, well, wait a minute, this show has turned into a hit. Let's do a full scale primetime reunion where we'll have them all on to talk about what the what what it was like then people were like give us something to sell so that's when they decided they were going to have this big finale and that wasn't none of us were contracted for that and i remember getting an i remember getting an email i think it was from stacy that went out to everybody that said oh boy. we're getting paid for this we're getting paid for this don't anybody agree to do this without getting paid and so i think they paid us an extra 10 or something thousand to do the finale yeah. because we weren't contracted to do it. Number 41, apparently the cast this season had a creepy psych doctor, and you better believe that Greg and Gretchen seeked revenge. We had this really creepy, I don't I don't think he's employed anymore there, but we had this really creepy like psych doctor, because they do all these psychological profiles on you and make you take all these tests. I, did they do the same for you, I mm -hmm. imagine? And so he was like sharing, like with Joel, he was like sharing everybody's, you know, insights and something a doctor should never do but anyway you know we got around talking about how creepy he was and so we ran up this huge big bill there while we were at the hotel <laughs> greg signed it to his room <laughs> <So>. <laughs> oh. which i didn't feel bad about that one at all i might have felt a little bad about some of the long coconut calls but i did not feel bad about that he deserved every second of it number 42 as mentioned earlier the show did not want rich to win but why? Why were they so fearful of him pulling it off? We had three people in the final uh, challenge, and then we ended up with two people at the very end. And we were all crossing our fingers that Kelly was going to win, because you want a hero to win. Right. Richard won. And we all just went, oh my God, our yeah. show is doomed. <laughs> the most evil, hated guy. Wait a minute, 72 million people are screaming from their New York City apartments. He won, he won. Right, right. So that set the tone, which is, this is an equal opportunity game. It doesn't mean nice people win. The worst person in the world could win if they know how to do it. Then Richard becomes infamous 
for saying that for not paying his taxes and then saying that we said we'd pay his taxes and people and the judge saying that doesn't make any sense you're going to prison number 43 bb is back with yet another screw up that annoys his tribe can you imagine if he made it all 39 days how many times he would have screwed things up He's washing his clothes with the fresh water. He's washing his clothes with the canteen water? Are you? <laughs> Unbelievable, man. Number 44. Before the show began, Rudy was not a fan of people who weren't straight, which is why him becoming best friends with Richard Hatch was a sweet odd couple bromance that we all appreciated. Why do I mention this though? Here is an interview with him before the season began. Would you vote against someone just because he was gay? <laughs> it's okay, we're just looking for honesty here. Yes. What if about a woman? What about a lesbian? Yes. Black? No. Number 45, Richard was undoubtedly a villain, but in retrospect, a lot of why he was painted as one is simply due to him having a secret alliance that annoyed all of Pagong. So around the time of Game Changers, Jeff is being interviewed and he says, no, their painting of Richard was not inaccurate. He was a villain. No, wait, you knew a different Richard Hatch than we saw, because obviously in the editing process, they probably make him look a little bit worse. Uh, no. Really? No. Was he that bad? Wow. But no, he was arrogant. And he would tell you that. And he would take his clothes off because he knew it would make yep. you uncomfortable. He wow. didn't really care what wow. he looked like. Number 46, bring back the Survivor opening credits, please. Thank you. They got their iconic status right away this season. And here's how they used to be put together before Survivor stopped doing them. How did the first open even come into being? Mark had the show idea, it was being created, and I, I said, oh, I want to be on board this show, this sounds great, this sounds amazing. And I went to Mark and I said, Mark, I will create the main title, opening sequence. When your show opens up, it's going to have energy, power, passion, emotion, and just translate what the entire show encompasses. Well, the beauty of the beginning of Survivor was that we had no idea how wildly popular it would be. We just enjoyed it. We were out there, we knew it was something special, we were having a great time working on it, and so we hoped that that would translate but you never really knew. I knew. Number 47. For our final secret, there isn't much to listen to in terms of audio. Why is that? Well, there's a seven minute video on the Borneo DVD that kind of just shows all the players together doing press before the game began and no one can talk. Basically, they do a whole lot of pregame things and there's just like this eerie silence. It is fascinating for a hardcore fan like myself. So which secret surprised you the most? Comment below and let me know. Thanks for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.